Hello everyone, I've um, completed my first two dives with the Paralens Vaquita, so I thought I'd just give you some initial feedback um, before I show you some of the footage. I've had a few issues, I don't think they'll be serious uh, and can be resolved, but I thought I'd just, before I show you the footage, go through some of the issues that I faced. Firstly, uh, let's look at what they supply in the kit, because I, there's still not a, va a manual available. I looked on the app. On the app it just refers you to this manual which I already have which was for the previous model so that makes it quite a bit annoying um, when you're trying to understand I mean it's pretty good I mean it's very intuitive don't get me wrong I've not had any major issues except when I um, looked at the logs it said EIS off which EIS is electronic image stabilization so I looked in in the in the manual this manual and it says that's um, under video settings so I went to video settings and the only thing under video settings is resolution and feet per second so does that mean EIS is automatic and then if it is why is the um, log saying it's off so I don't know. Um, using it underwater, again, very easy to use. It, it worked nice on the tray. However, I think at least on three occasions, it froze. And again, I didn't really know quite what to do. I did make some research last night when I was uh, trying to look at footage and stuff, which is another story. It wasn't easy. And I had underwater, switched it off and on, which was is the solution for freezing, but I didn't know you had to hold the button for 10 seconds. And what that created was another problem because here's the dial you can see nice and easy to use underwater even with gloves but to switch it on and off you've got to go back to power the power setting right then you've got to switch it off and then it takes time to switch back on when you're diving like we were at around I think 24 meters in not great viz for most people it was actually pretty good viz for us so we were quite happy you've got to then turn it back to video now you can't see these markings very well when you're diving at that depth and you haven't got no overhead sunlight and the visibility is six maximum eight meters you'll see that on the upside down cars on the second dive we had even less visibility so these markings don't stand out i've got poor eyesight i do have a prescription mask on the way and oh, by the way you all know about this it has been dispatched from england so i'm looking forward to that you know you can't really see them now, that's not going to be a problem for me in future because I know it's an issue, so I'll make sure I go one, two clicks to video. Other things I weren't impressed with, it's already scratched. Now, I had it in a tray. I wasn't dragging it along, and that's just when I've had the camera hanging off my BCD and it hit, hit something on there. I did have a GoPro hanging off as well for a while. So, how did that actually happen? Well, it does tell me the coating on this nicely machined and engineered device is not that great does it does it matter to me not really because I'll, I'll look after after that and if it's got a few scratches the amount we dive we dive a hell of a lot so gear does get pretty hard time with us other concerns that i've got you know i've taken the back screen off this oleo display is very nice but again if you've got any problems with your eyesight or a bit older and you need reading glasses you are going to have to um, get a prescription lens or put some stick on to see this. I can't understand why you couldn't put a magnifier in the end here. If they made that a magnifier, it would be a lot better. I've also got concerns that this is a push on, push off fit and it just relies on that single o-ring for the seal and you see here you, you put a lanyard on there I actually thought to put a bit of bungee so in case the ball mount failed um, I'd have it on there but I was just worried that there could be some stress on that seal and the camera can flood it's only a concern I'm sure they thought about it but I'm just giving you my opinion and lastly just on the camera itself this mount has already come loose now I fitted it myself it's nice it's a nice secure mount, but it came loose. Um, this bungee's on there was just so I could fix it to another point, so in case anything happened with that fitting, with the, the, the ball fittings in, I didn't lose the camera. So that's a bit disappointing. Do I put Loctite in it? Probably uh, some underwater Loctite. 
but why do I have to do that? Why? I mean, it's, it's an expensive premium price camera. You know, the engineering, sorry guys, should be a bit better. This go, the cap goes back on. You have to pull this back. I mean, it's very clever, personally, but it's fiddly, right? And then you've got to push it on. I would have preferred, personally, a screw-on fitting. And as I said earlier, why can't that be a magnifying? It would make life a lot easier. And that's brought me on to another little gripe. Because I've been studying this manual, I think we've been um, parallels maybe taking the mickey a little bit. Because when you bought the previous model, look what they included. But it's got, came with a nice case, it came with a lanyard, it came with a universal um, GoPro type mount. Now I know these guys are going to compete with a GoPro and go for the upper end of the GoPro market like me. But please, put it, give us a decent fitting that we can use on all the accessories that are available, trays, that sort of things for GoPro. I mean, just look how this is mounted on my tray, right? I've got to put a, a GoPro fitting on. I've had to then put a ball joint, then a, a clamp, and then that. You know, I didn't want to do that. I would have rather just gone, just put a GoPro type fitting on, on the bottom and then connected this. So, you know, come on. These are expensive cameras, so I'm expecting a little bit more for my money. You know, I got a gripe on the first video about um, having to pay for a lens cap. I didn't. I did have to uh, pay for the mount kit, which for me is money um, badly spent, to be honest. All I would have liked is that fitting there, and then I would have jury rigged my own sort of fitting, and I may still end up doing that. Now let's talk about the app. What a disaster. Sorry to say, big disaster. Difficulty connecting, right? Even though I did connect my home Wi-Fi to the camera, I didn't make that rookie mistake. It just wouldn't um, recognize, it wouldn't download the dives. And I was getting very frustrated that evening about that. So I said, right, let me just leave that. I'll take out the SD card and remember, you're only supposed to use um, SanDisk SD cards, and that's a little bit another gripe now because I've had to buy a second one, and you'll understand why in a second. So I take out the SD card, put it into my computer, up come two files, one with the, um, the footage and some camera shots because when I'd um, reset the camera on the power and then inadvertently put it on the camera, I did manage to get some snaps, as they call them, or, or pictures. But then I want to look at the footage. And there's two files, two MP for each one. There's a low res and the normal one. Well, I couldn't look at the high res ones because it kept saying it wants a, a Kodak, HEVC Kodak extension from Microsoft for a cost of 99 cents. Well, that night I just thought, oh, this is, this is, I'm just fed up with this. So anyway, it went to bed the next morning got up and said right I need to look at this footage so I could look at the um, pictures and then I started looking at the low res and I could look at the low res one of the really annoying things is and you'll see this on the shot now you know the amount of files mp4 files are there why couldn't they for the low res say put them in Windows Media file so when I want to sort all the footage I just click on type and then I know where my high res are and then I can catalog them because I can catalog the files for every dive, starting at one, going down, so I know what the sequence is. So I put a number, I put a brief description and the date. It's gonna be painful doing that um, with the way the files are on the SD card. So I managed to look at the, the low res um, footage. I tried to buy the Kodak. I said, all right, I'll pay Microsoft 99 cents for the HEVC Kodak. And guess what happened? You'll see the screenshots now. They wouldn't let me buy it because I wasn't in the USA. So now, remember, I'm 62 years old. I'm 62 years old. I'm not a computer geek. Now I've got to try and figure out how to get that Kodak on my computer. Luckily, a guy from Microsoft is diving with me on Saturday, and I'm hoping he can solve the problem for me. I'm also going to try it in an Apple computer to see if it'll work straight away. If not, in the office hopefully maybe our graphic designer has got a Kodak extension that will mean we can look at the um, high res so footage that may come up after this because I'm recording this 
a couple of days before we're going to put the video up because it's national national day break in the UAE see I'm wearing my UAE hat I love the UAE we've got a five-day holiday so I'm a bit constrained on editing and, and getting people to help me so hopefully you'll be seeing high resolution footage not low resolution footage oh, another gripe when you put it on charge you don't know if it's charging there's no indicator like like you would get on an Osmo or a GoPro or any camera it, there's nothing to tell you that you're actually charging um, you can switch on the power and it will tell you it's charging but it's not telling you what percentage charge there and when the charging's finished that is really really infuriating you know that's a definite I mean why could they have not just put an indicator light red for charging green for fully charged oh bat battery life I'm not really sure but I've got to do a bit more research how long the battery life is because they didn't supply a specification with it. I know it will change between what set if you're using 4K, uh, 1080, 720. Um, so I'm going to try and find some information on that. I hope I can because then I'm going to test it and see actual battery life versus specification. But if I can't find it, you see we've got the dock so if I can't find it we'll stick it in in the dock anyway and we'll measure the battery life um, on each setting I will definitely do it on 4k 1080 and 720 and just see how long the battery lasts because it's not got a removable battery if you're on a liverboard or anything you know you've kind of um, you would like to have it charged fully for the three or four dives in the day if not you've got to take that cap off the back and plug it in again so that's all I've got to say on the camera for now it's been a bit long-winded but it was a lot for me to take in and think about but I rode it all. and that's why I had a, a couple of days between dives I wanted to play with the camera not because when we go out we're out usually we're, we're out at five we leave that means we're up at four and then like the other day we came back we we're back at 5 30 by the time we got everything ready the last thing you want to do is have trouble with a nap and trouble downloading which I had. Just a, another point, I mentioned that I had to order another SanDisk SD card. I, I told you in the earlier video I had bought Alexa because I want to make sure I'm getting all the footage. I don't want to use the Alexa SD card and the reason I need another SD card is that I'm afraid to take it off the footage, everything we've got to date, off the SD card in case it doesn't transfer to someone else's computer from the PC because when I when I looked at the files on on the PC this came up about file could possibly be corrupt it wasn't saying anything about the codec when I looked at it off tried to run it on the PC off the SD card that's when it wanted the codec so I've had to go and spend money on another expensive SanDisk SD card which obviously I'm not very happy about diving's expensive I try and do it as cost effectively as possible anyway that's it I'll talk you through the footage now um, there'll be another video uploaded tomorrow with more footage and the day after uh, I'm getting used to cam the camera hopefully the camera's getting used to me right and then what we're gonna do uh, also I had a couple of dive buddies with me with GoPro footage so if they've got similar footage uh, on another video not this one we will do some side-by-side -side comparisons um, just as, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm comparing it to GoPro. I know Paralens will, will not like me for that, but you know GoPro is the go-to action underwater action cam at the moment. I know it's not designed for that, but it does easily work underwater. So if you're paying so much extra, I think it's only reasonable that you um, com that I compare it against GoPro footage. But that'll be up in about a week's time, I guess. So thanks very much. Enjoy the footage. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I'm just laughing at the moment because we've been talking about all the gear and no idea because I've got the, the Paralens for Keto which I'm going to try out today for the first time. Let's hope I don't lose it. So where are we going today? We're going to have a second attempt at Secret Dow. As you know, the other week we went out and the Secret Dow actually was the Secret Tug. So we've got new coordinates for the Dow. So it's a big wooden trading Dow with cars on it so hopefully we've got the right marks hopefully we find it and 
let's see if it's a good dive. Down the line, looking forward to seeing the Dow, but what did we find? A car. Um, but just look at the colours and the resolution. I was quite far away and very pleased um, with the footage, with the quality of the footage, not necessarily my camera skills, but you see we've got good definition, good colour. Um, so we thought, oh, the Dow can't be far away. We had pretty good viz, six to eight metres. Um, in about 24 meters of depth. Look at this yellow bar angel fish. That's how you can see the quality of the, of the images coming out of the uh, of the Vikita. And here I just got some soft corals. So yeah, um, pretty impressive because we never have really good um, conditions. This is very typical of the conditions. These are fact quite good conditions where we can see so much. Um, we found a second car, but sadly no Dow. But the purpose of this dive was to check out the Vaquita, and it performed very well, except it kept freezing. Um, but just we do a hard reset, you have to put it back to the power switch and then just hold the sliding switch until it resets. But yeah, um, you see that the images are a bit wobbly, that's because there is no EIS or electronic image stabilization as yet. There's me just checking the depth, and that was the dive. Nice. Um, people up near the safety stop. Ah, we did have a nice queenfish visit under the boat while we were taking our kid off. And there you can see, didn't come closer, unfortunately. Um, and then out onto the boat again, very nice image. Well, we've just done our first dive on Secret Dow, and it remains a secret, as Badger's just said. But not really, because we did find two cars. So we know this Dow has cars on it. So we've just um, gone back to some other marks that we saved on the way out. And we've hooked onto something which rises about five meters from the seabed. It's very close to where we had the cars. So I'm hoping that it's the secret Dow at last. Or does it remain a secret? Let's find out. We're on Abdullah's wreck now where we're going to do our second Paralens dive. Um, it's coming up to high tide. Let's hope the visit's good and let's put the Paralens Vaquita through its paces again. Looking forward to this. I understand the camera a bit better now. So let's see what footage we can get. So down the line onto Abdullah's wreck. Lots of snapper as usual. Um, the viz wasn't as good as normal. A little bit of current running, not much. Um, but again, very happy with the quality of images and the quality of, of color. Um, really, really nice. Unfortunately, no big fish, except for one barracuda, um, which will make an appearance right now. But again, he came in nice and close and just look at the definition and we've got the full color on him. So yeah, the DCC dynamic color correction does work. It, it, and I'm very happy with that because our conditions are very challenging as you can see. But um, overall, very pleased with everything. Um, the camera did freeze again, unfortunately, but I'm sure that's gonna be addressed in the firmware update. Lots of snapper again and just generally taking general wreck shots back on the boat well i hope you enjoyed looking at that footage i'm very pleased with the resolution and the colors that came out the only uh, negative comment during the dive was the camera kept freezing and i kept having to reset it um, that needs to be fixed by paralens pronto the next two dives um, will be on the dara and abdullah's wreck in, in a couple of days time so I'm hoping I can get the um, dives three and four up 
in a few days. I don't think I think we'll be able to handle the footage a bit easier than on this one because we did have a lot of trouble downloading it and editing it. But more about that in the next video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time.